We have a biotechnology program that we focus a lot on undergraduate research. Um, last year was the year that the Martian came out and also the year where NASA made a big announcement about the discovery of liquid water on the surface of Mars. So we found that to be a nice opportunity to engage our students in some projects. And because we study algae anyway, and cyanobacteria, or a kind of a division of the collection of organisms known as algae, we thought that it might be interesting to examine the possibilities of exploiting some of their properties to use in context of future Mars settlements. There's a lot of things that have to be answered, questions that have to be answered uh, for that. One is, can these organisms survive on the surface of Mars? If they can, then that's going to produce a lot of advantages to potential future astronauts and or colonists. Um, for example, uh, it costs a lot of money to transport anything all the way to Mars. Uh, current estimates are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars per kilogram. So any savings you can have on cargo is tremendously helpful to make the uh, such a mission cost effective and affordable for you know humanity as a whole. What we want to do then is try to take advantage of the resources that are available on Mars already. Now unfortunately there's not a lot of resources that can be used to support life, at least not yet. But what is there on Mars? There's an atmosphere that's primarily carbon dioxide and, and nitrogen. Well it turns out that certain strains of cyanobacteria, that's the kind of algae that we focus on in this project, they can photosynthesize which means they can take the CO2 from the atmosphere and then they can convert it into organic material. Many strains can also fix nitrogen. So those resources are there in abundance and they can be used basically to manufacture organic material. If you can manufacture organic material, then you have a chance to produce food and other resources that could support life of colonists, astronauts, and so on on Mars. And we're looking at different aspects of that kind of technology, that kind of biological technology, uh, to help with these kinds of future missions. Um, it's a very cold place. It's a, cold, a place with a very thin atmosphere and a lot of ultraviolet radiation. Uh, there's no oxygen, or very little oxygen, uh, a lot of CO2, a lot of nitrogen. So what we do is we take the resources and the, the facilities that we have in our laboratory and we basically throw one variable at a time at these organisms. So for example, we have what we call an anaerobic chamber. And in the anaerobic chamber, we can simulate the gas composition of Mars. What we've done is we've looked and see which of these organisms can grow under that composition or that gas composition. Um, and some can, some can't. Another thing that you'll see on Mars is extremely low atmospheric pressure. It's, uh, atmospheric pressure on the surface of Mars is about 1% that of Earth at sea level. So we have a vacuum chamber and we can evacuate the uh, air in the vacuum chamber, place cultures of the cyanobacteria species in the vacuum chamber and see which ones can survive. Um, we also can expose the organisms to ultraviolet light of similar intensities of what they might encounter on the surface of Mars. And once again, it's really a see who survives the things that Mars will throw at them. And the idea then is to identify one or more organisms that could be grown on the surface of Mars where essentially what their role will be from a life support uh, context or, or perspective is they will convert the inorganic resources of Mars to organic resources that can be used uh, to support humans.